Elementor's basic gallery widget. I'm going to show you how to style it, how to set it up, and also how to create different columns across desktop, tablet, and mobiles. That seems to be something that a few people are having some trouble with. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is actually put the gallery into the page. So come on down on your page and create a new section. A single one will do for now. And then under the widgets toolbar, you're not going to find this under the basic section. Uh, obviously not under Pro, it's just here under the General section, so Basic Gallery, drag it into the page. And then what we can do is select our photos from up here, so click over here. If you haven't uploaded them yet, select Files, upload them, and then you'll find them in your Media Library. For now though, I'm just going to choose these eight photos here. Actually I've got nine, so let's take that one out. There we go, Create New Gallery. And then what we can do from here is just drag and drop these into the order that we want to have them. If you've put any in there that you have second thoughts about, you can get rid of them just clicking the uh, little X's. You can also add some more by clicking Add to Gallery. And if you want, you can add captions to these images and we can then get those to pull through and display on the web page if you want that. If you don't, just leave them blank and insert them into the gallery. Okay, so by default, they're gonna look uh, like this as thumbnails. What we can do though is come over here to image size and we can change this so we can go medium or medium large. I think medium large is gonna give a good resolution here without being too big. So if we did large, for example, they're not getting any bigger. All this is now doing is gonna be slowing down the web page. You don't need uh, that big a file size. So we'll just leave this on medium for now. Down here, we can change the amount of columns that we have. So everything that we're doing here at the moment is uh, fairly static. So, so this is the amount of columns that's going to be displayed on the desktop. It will change for tablet and mobile at the moment. So if I change this to three, it's going to do this. Obviously two will change it again. But for the moment, I'm going to leave it on four. We can then choose if we want this to link to a media file or an attachment page. Media file is default, so when we click on it, it's going to come up like this. If I go back into it and I change this to none, now when we click on it, nothing's going to happen. I'm going to leave it on media file. Lightbox is default, so that's how it pops up, like you just saw, which looks quite good for people when they're browsing through. And then this is the default order. I put it into the gallery. If we select random, you see it's gonna change the order of these and it'll do it differently each time. So if I change it back to random again. Okay, we've got the flower at the top left. If I put it back to random now, we've got a different one. I do it again. And now we've got the city at the top left. So it's gonna come up differently every time when somebody visits the web page. So I quite like that, I'm gonna leave it on random. And then what we can do from here is come up to style and Default spacing, if you change this to custom, you're going to be able to switch the borders that we've got between here. So we can either increase it or decrease the borders down. So I like it a little bit closer. I think something like that looks quite good. If you actually want to add a, a proper border around this, so a frame, you can do that just here. So we can have our solid border, double border, all the normal types of borders you get with uh, the different widgets in Elemental. That's going to give this sort of effect. If you want, you can change the color just down here. We can also change the width of this. So I've currently got it all linked. So if I just do one, it's gonna do all of them. And we get these sort of borders. If you unlink it, you can then just have the value on one of these. So now we've only got the border at the top. I don't like it, so we're gonna take it off. What I do quite like though is using the border radius. So if I bring this up, you're gonna see it's curving the corners. And that can look quite good, I think around 50. And then just below that, you've got the option for the caption. So if you did have a caption on these images and you wanted to uh, obviously put those into the page, then this is where we can change those. So you can change the text color, you can change the alignment, move it to the left or right. It'll all just be below the images and you can also change the typography on that as well. So that's what the captions do. Now, this is where some people seem to be getting a little bit stuck because if I switch this over to uh, the tablet view, we stay with the four. If I change it to the mobile view, we go to just one. Now generally, I suggest that you leave it like this because Elemental pretty much knows best. On a mobile, these are gonna be quite small, so just a single row is, is what's gonna look best. 
However, if you've got sort of, I don't know, 30 or 40 images in your gallery, that suddenly becomes quite a lot of scrolling. So if for any reason you did want to have, um, you know, two rows, for example, really easy to do. You don't need to go adding CSS code. Um, that is one way of doing it. But just remember that the whole point of Elementor is that it means you can build websites without having to code. So if you don't need to put it in, don't do it, okay? It's much better to keep your website nice and clean. So the way that we would do this instead is by simply creating two columns. So now that I've got my two columns, I would come back, grab the basic gallery and drag it in again. I could just duplicate this one if I wanted, but I'm gonna do it afresh. So we come in, select four photos. Let's just do one of the flowers, create new gallery and insert it in. And then over here, I do the same thing. So for this one, let's just duplicate it. Uh, sorry, click and drag it over like that. And then what we're gonna do now is change these images. So I select this widget, come over here, take these ones out of the gallery, add to gallery. And now I'm gonna do these four up here, add those in. We can style these in the same way if we want to. So just click on over, go to style, come down, give it a border radius. Let's just say 30 on these ones, change them to medium size. I can right click, copy, right click, paste style, and that's going to curve the corners. What I do need to do though is tell it that I want these to be medium sized instead of thumbnails. So now that we've done this, if we look over on the mobile view. So this is what we've just done. It's still in a single column, but what we would now do is come up here, click onto our uh, column settings, and then under column width, change this to 50%. We then come down to this one, do the same thing, click on this, change it to 50%, and there we go. We now have two columns on the mobile view. If we wanted, we could do this with three, we could do it with four, but it's gonna become really, really small. It's gonna be difficult for people to see on mobile, so I'd suggest that you go for two at the maximum. But now the problem we obviously have is that you've still got this showing. But the way to get rid of that, if I just hop on back to the desktop view for a second, what we can do is come up to our section settings of this uh, new section we created, come on over to advanced, and then come on down to responsive. So when you click on the responsive tab, it's gonna ask you, do you want to hide it on the desktop? Well, yes I do, so we're gonna take it off. And I'm also gonna hide it on tablets as well. So now we see that this is grayed out. And it's basically meaning that it's only gonna display on a mobile. And then what we're gonna do is come over to this one and we're gonna do the same thing, except under responsive, I'm now gonna hide this on the uh, mobile. And I'm also gonna hide it on the tablet. So we can, I'll show you what that looks like actually. So I'll come back over to here, reveal this one on the tablet. So now if we take a look at mobile first, so anything that's grayed out on your page isn't gonna be seen when somebody actually comes through and visits it. So now when somebody visits on mobile, this is all they're gonna see, that is not gonna to appear to them. And likewise, when we come over to desktop, they're not gonna see any of this, they're only gonna see this. And the other good thing about that is if we wanted, we could now come back into uh, our gallery over here on the desktop, come back over here to content, and I could say, actually, now I just want to have three columns on there. And I'll probably obviously add in another image to make that look good. But wh whatever we're doing isn't affecting any other device, purely the desktop now. Now, if I come down here, go to responsive, go to tablet, obviously we had hidden this, didn't we? It was only this one that was being revealed, but now this doesn't look very good. So what we can do is click up here, change this to 100%, change this to 100% as well. And now we've obviously got a row of four showing on a tablet. We've got a row of three showing on a desktop. And when we go back over to the mobile, we've just got a row of two. So that is how you can create different amounts of columns across the devices if you don't want to stick with Elementor's default of just switching it over to the one row for you. All of that said and done, I would personally stick with this one, but that will come in useful, as I said, if you've got lots of images in your gallery and you just need to uh, obviously show more of them at once. And that's it for the basic gallery. There's obviously more that you can do with the Pro Gallery in Elementor Pro. 
So if you have got Elementor Pro, check out that video and I'll show you all the things you can do with that. But for now, you can make a really good looking gallery with this free version of Elementor. And now you know how to style it up, make it look good and display differently across devices.